Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Flavio Pereira, I'm part of the Technical Enablement, and this is the part five of the Compute Lesson 200. So we're gonna talk about custom image, how important export, and also options to bring your own image to. So as part of the features uh, under Compute, you can actually create custom images of your running instances. So if you have a running instance with um, some uh, application installed, and all the configuration and customizations you made inside of, that, inside of that instance, you can actually create a custom image of it. It's fairly easy. So you, you on the details of the computing instance, you can just go in actions and create a custom image. When you do that, uh, what happens is the instance will shut down and then uh, the process of creating a custom image will start. And then once once the, the image creation finished, the machine will, will be back to the stage of up and running again. So with that, you're gonna have a copy of your boot volume with all the configuration, all the chains you actually execute inside of that. And then uh, with the operating system you actually use to uh, launch the instance. So with that, you can just create multiple instances uh, using the exactly the same configuration, all the template, all the information inside of the boot volume. So what's the difference between the custom image and the instance config that we mentioned on uh, an instance configuration and pools? So the difference is the custom image will hold all the details inside of the boot volume. What I mean by that is all the files, all the workloads, all the application actually installed inside of the, the boot volumes, all the binaries will be, will be available there. When using instance config, you just get the skeleton of the image, right? Uh, you're just getting the information about operating system, network, uh, what's the volume is attached to, to the instance. Um, so you get all that information, the metadata, but you don't get the binaries or all the files that you actually um, placed inside of the boot volume. So in a custom image, you get all of it, okay? The thing is, uh, when you're creating a custom image, all the data attached to any block volume to that instance would not be part of the custom image. Only the data included on the boot volume will be available there. Okay, so the maximum size for creating a custom image is 300 uh, gigabytes. So you have to be uh, pay attention to it. If you have a boot volume that's bigger than that, uh, that's going to be a, a problem to create a custom image. So you have to make sure that your custom image is actually um, on that limit. So apart from it, you can actually bring your own image. What I mean by that, you can have an image up and running on premises and you wanna bring that over to OCI. This is actually possible to do uh, as well. So the way you do it, uh, if you have an image running on, uh, on premises, you can either export that image on key call uh, format or VMDK format. You can place that image in an object storage and then from that object storage, you can create that custom image. And then from there, you can launch that instance, right? So it's a few steps you have to go through uh, in order to have the image imported inside of OCI. And then you can just um, create that image uh, on your account. So this is ideal for all the images you have created with all your own packages, your patches. So you have a control environment of your operating system on your premises and you want to bring the way you actually create there inside of OCI. So fairly um, uh, straightforward to do it. There's a few steps you have to do in order to actually put the instances over there, but it's possible. So you can, you can bring that image over uh, to OCI. There's a couple things uh, you have to pay attention to it um, in terms of um, configuration of the image. So you have to make sure you have Cloud in Eat install, right? So that will be uh, allow you to give the SSH injection uh, on the image when you when you deploy that in OCI. Make sure you have all the serial console enabled for Linux images so you can get instance console connection in case something went wrong with your, your machine. Um, so these are the things you have to pay attention uh, when uh, using bring your own image. So when you have the image imported inside of OCI and you want to launch that custom image or the image that you just bring from on-premises, you have a few options you can use. It depends on the version of the kernel and the version of the operating system. You can, um, you can use one of the three options. You can do emulate, emulation mode. Um, of course, all the drivers will be emulated. So if you have older operating systems that you want, you want to bring over, uh, you can use the emulation mode. It will be the, the way to do it. Power virtualized mode for more modern uh, kernels. 
um, most of the operating systems, you know, from a uh, year, two years ago, we will support parameterized mode, so we'll be able to move that just fine to OCI. A native mode, like if using Burr Metal, you create a custom image of a Burr Metal server, you want to make sure you get all the drivers of that specific um, uh, hardware, right? So you can use the native mode uh, inside of OCI. Even for VMs that you uh, created using the Oracle pre-built images, uh, when you actually deploy that as a custom image, that will be part of the native mode too. So you'll be able to support a wide range of uh, a new uh, operating systems and all the shapes available inside of OCI. All right, so let me do a custom image demo and show you how you can bring the image um, inside of OCI, how you create a custom image from images up and running uh, as well. So I'll give you an example of how to do that inside of the console. All right, so let me do a quick demo of um, custom image and how you can bring an image to, to OCI. So here you can see my screen. I'm logged in an OCI account. Uh, if you go to the left menu uh, on compute, I can select instances, right? And I can see um, some of my instances up and running here. So if I just want to create a custom uh, image from a running instance, so I select the running instance, I can just go in action and create a custom image. So when I do that, it's going to ask me to which compartment I want to place that image and which name I want for that image. Let's say VM01 custom. And then when I create a custom image, what's happening is, um, like I mentioned on the, on the presentation, this uh, instance will start going uh, on the shutdown mode and then um, the image uh, will be created. Once the image is created, you'll be able to see that on the, on the custom image um, screen. So if I go here on the custom image, you can see it's already saying provisioning is just creating the image for me um, on that screen. Okay, this is one way, one easy way to do it. If you have already an um, instance sample running, you just wanna create a custom image of it, so you can do that. Uh, you can also import an image um, to bring your own image from outside. So if you want to bring that, you can click click on, click on Import Image. And then uh, you can give it a name. You can select which operating system you actually bring. Is it Linux or Windows? You have to provide the object storage URL. So uh, the URL of your uh, image. So here's one thing. When you, when you get the image, the VMDK file or the key call file, you can create a bucket inside of the object storage. And then you place the image on that bucket, and then you get the URL uh, of that image, right? Of that file that you just uploaded inside of the bucket. Once you have the URL, you can just copy the URL right here, uh, and then select which uh, which image type you want. So let me just do real quick one. I do have one image here uh, on my object storage. So if we go to my object storage, I have an OS image, and I have a CentOS um, eight. Um, VMDK file that I just uploaded to the bucket here. So if I go on the details of uh, that file, I can copy the URL, which is showing right here. I can just copy that. And I can go back to compute custom images and click on import image. Then I can give it a name. I can uh, put the object URL. Okay, and select the, the image type, right? Say CentOS 8, select the image type. So this is an EVMDK file. If it was a key call file, I'll use that one. If I just exported an image from a current uh, instance, <coughs> I can select OCI and that will be um, uh, using the OCI extension um, file. So the launch mode uh, that we, we talked about, you can do a parameterized mode, emulated mode, a native mode. So if you, uh, using modern kernels, you can enable the, the parameterized drivers and then you can use the parameterized mode here. And then you can click import image. So once you do that, uh, the image will be imported from the object storage to the custom image uh, portion. And then you're gonna see something like that, right? You're gonna see the image, the CentOS OS available for you here. Then from here, you can just click and say, create an instance 
or you can go to the instance and, and go to a creation of an instance like you normally do and then you have to select the, the custom image here so if it does go on these options say create an instance um, then I can select the availability domains, the shapes that I want to use, all that configuration network, right? Enter the SSH key, like a normal normal um, instance launch. And then once you, you're done with that, then uh, if you go back to the instances, you can see, you're going to see your instance up and running. So I do have one CentOS 8 um, up and running here. Yeah, this is very straightforward. Uh, you can have your images up and running uh, in OCI. Yeah, thank you. See you next time.